One man with some uh, unique insight into uh, tomorrow's caucuses in Iowa is Time Magazine's Joe Klein. Joe, it is always great to have someone great here older than me. Oh, uh, I'm not even older than you. Even my age need, <laughs> need someone they can look up to. You've been to more of these caucuses than I have, and it's just a pleasure. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Well, it's great to be back, <laughs> especially for this very weird one. It Hasn't is the weirdest it? of all, isn't it? Is. You know, it's, a, it's as if the Republican Party caught malaria and you know, the candidates get really hot, they get fevered, and then they go into the, the, then they cool off and they have chills. You know, it's up and down fever chart, you know, for all of them, except for Mitt Romney, who just putters along at 20, 25 percent. So yeah. we'll, why ahead. doesn't anybody have a fever for Mitt Romney? Um, because, you know, there, there are three reasons that I found. One is that his record in Massachusetts, they don't like the fact that he, that he passed universal health care there. Number two, and this is something I get really in a surprisingly amount, is that people think of him as a rich guy. They don't think he understands their lives. And the third, which you don't hear very much, but is very much part of the picture, is that he's a Mormon. And there's a certain number of evangelical Christians who just will not vote for him, but they don't want to talk about it. And you've heard that from, from voters here? They yeah. brought up those particular things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, the most surprising one is that, is that he's a rich guy. And you, and you see a lot of anti-Wall Street sentiment, especially from Tea Party sorts. And the Tea Party sorts are the ones who have been most disaffected in this race. They're the ones who are jumping from candidate to candidate to candidate, trying to find a home. Uh, we've been talking about this all morning, and that is this uh, projection that the, uh, uh, that's in the Des Moines Register poll when you get down at really deep into the weeds of that poll. It says that 60% uh, of the vote out here in 2008 uh, was the evangelical Christian. Mm -hmm. This time they're projecting only 30 percent. I asked Michelle Bachman, I said, well, what happened? Did they all become Democrats or, or did they go away? Uh, uh, John Dickerson says it's that that Mike Huckabee brought out more of those folks than normal. What do you think that's all about? I, I think it's partially that, but also uh, there are a lot of independents who pick one, one side or the other. And this, side you only, this time you only have one side. And a lot of those independents are going to Ron Paul, which brings down the number of evangelical voters here. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is that this place is supposed to winnow out candidates. Yeah. Uh, and it may not win out, winnow out every, anybody. You know, the, the thing that the political pros have been talking about here the last few days isn't Iowa at all. It's South Carolina, where people think that the anti-Romney will emerge. You know, you'll get Rick Perry going there, even though he's probably not going to do so well here. Newt Gingrich is, has been ahead in the polls there. Santorum, who is surging here, will obviously be there. Those three guys will be contesting, um, you know, who's going to be the anti-Romney. I assume it, Michelle Bachman will go back to her day job. Let's talk about the future, because I think that's important. Yeah. Assuming Mitt Romney can squeak out a victory here in Iowa, does that give him the momentum to try and wrap this up early, or does the conventional wisdom still hold that this, he's going to have to fight for this for a while? Yeah, I think, I think he's going to have to fight for it, in part because the rules have changed. Right. You know, it's not winner-take-all anymore. He could win every primary between now and the Republican convention and still find himself in a death fight at that convention if you have two other candidates, one of them being Ron Paul. Ron Paul comes in with 10% of the vote. You know, he could be the kingmaker. You know, uh, uh, coming out on the plane last night, I'm now an expert. I got here <laughs> last night. C uh, coming out on the plane last night, uh, uh, a Republican uh, consultant said to me, he's not even sure that South Carolina counts. He says if Romney wins out here and then goes on to win uh, in New Hampshire, that whoever the anybody but Romney candidate is in, um, in South Carolina won't really matter. It'll all be decided in Florida. That could be true, or it could be Super Tuesday a month, a month later. What, because there is no winner-take-all, um, you know, this thing changes. We're in completely uncharted waters. This is weird. I mean, this isn't, this isn't in the DNA of the Republican mm -hmm. Party to have this sort of indecisiveness. And you see them, and you hear them on talk radio um, kind of pushing toward Romney, uh, but they have a long way to go. Yep. Joe, thank you very much. I'm glad to know somebody's as confused about all this as, as I am. I'm confused. I, I'm, it's nobody knows, hey, right? Bob, it's not confusion, it's humility. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Joe. Uh,